Good, a little low. Good morning. Welcome to our daily devotions with Pastor Sutton here on this Saturday morning, January 14th. Another cold winter day in Wisconsin, but it is Saturday. <clears throat> I pulled out a black t-shirt today, turned out to be a painting t-shirt, so you get some speckles on the picture. <clears throat> I believe this shirt got speckled when I was painting the between the joist spaces in our house in Marlette in the basement as we were remodeling the basement. So, good morning. Glad you could be with us here for, again, for a little time in God's Word. Um, let's see all who all is joining. It's, it's Saturday, and, you know, I just don't really care. <laughs> um, it didn't snow. It didn't rain. It did get cold. Uh, it didn't get as cold as they said it was going to be. But, you know, it's Saturday morning, and here we are. Um <clears throat> Monday, well, tomorrow, Sunday afternoon, um, I'm going to be going to Symposia in 14, for, in 14 Wayne, no, in Fort Wayne uh, with some fellow pastors. And uh, so next week's going to be a little off for you guys. Um, <clears throat> there won't be nothing. Um, I'll probably, there'll probably be a mix of recorded and live uh, from the Symposia from a dorm room that I'm staying in, um, uh, devotions there. Um, I, I, I just haven't decided quite how the whole thing's going to go. I'll probably record. I know Monday for sure will be recorded. Um, and Friday for sure will be recorded. I'm going to do those probably before I leave. <clears throat> um, and then, and then maybe Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday will be live where I'll post a a previous um, devotion for those days. Oh, there'll be something up here for you um, each day. I just, I just depends on what the day brings. <clears throat> so, uh, so good morning. So be warned. Next week will be a little different. Um, and I'll be back here on Saturday. I don't know what time. I, I just looking at the schedule here <clears throat> for the um, for the event. And, oh, that's right. They changed how that works. I can't share that just yet. I haven't re redone the setup. Um, but the, uh, wait, wait a minute, maybe. Nope, that's not it either. Um, the, the schedule has got uh, the last, the last uh, panel discussion is at 11 o'clock um, in a closing chapel service after that, I believe. So uh, we may not, we may, may not be rolling out of, Fort Wayne until three o'clock in the afternoon, um, which puts us back here at two a.m. or something stupid like that. So, um, so I, I don't know. We'll just have to kind of play it by play it by ear on Saturday um, on, on Saturday morning. But that's a week from now. What are you worried about? Not the let the problems of today suffice. Let's see. Again, let's see who's here with us this morning. Uh, Michael, good morning. Unreasonably cold. 41, going to be 54. Yeah, for Florida, that's unreasonably cold. I'm cold. I forget, I've got a T-shirt on. That was not the brightest move on a Saturday morning. But, you know, I'm 41 and then we're 14 right now according to the weather service so you know take your pick would two same numbers you put them in the order you want geraldine and neil good morning to you guys and grant debbie good morning and there's jerry good morning 27 we'll see see mike you could go back to michigan and it wouldn't be that much colder than where you are now we, it'd be 10 or so degrees warmer than we are here. Verna, good morning. There's Connie and Robin. Good morning to you guys. Uh, 10 in Harshaw. Burr, put on an extra blanket and refill the coffee cup. Linda Fisher. Uh, Linda Fisher. Linda, well, Linda Fisher Donnelly, yeah. Linda and Keith somewhere, I'm guessing. Good morning to you guys. Maybe Bobby and maybe Bob and Jeannie are down by you guys. And uh, uh, maybe you're down in Florida there, too, uh, over at David's house. Uh, Bonnie is up and moving. Good morning to her. Leela, good morning. Kathy, good morning. I'm going to click my refresh here. It looked like it was updating fairly well, but I just don't know anymore. I don't trust it. 
technology. It's a wicked Persian thing. All right. That looks like everybody. So let's go ahead. Uh, good morning to all of you who are watching now, all of you who are watching later. Good day, good afternoon, good evening, whatever it might be. I'm glad you're taking a little time in, in God's word today. Um, St. Paul and, Tom, and Tomahawk, the pastor there was sharing with me something that their congregation's doing. That sounds just marvelous, but also terribly tedious. It, they've got seven bookmarks. And each book part, bookmark has 52 readings divided out between the the uh, the, the, the prehistory, history, uh, the Psalms, the uh, wisdom books, uh, the Gospels, um, and the and the letters, um, the the epistles, uh, and and the idea is the bookmarks seven bookmarks for seven days, right? Instead of seven brides for seven brothers, seven bookmarks for seven days, 52 weeks in the year. And they've got enough, they've got a little reading, and it winds up being anywhere from uh, four to six chapters a day, which I think is cumbersome, um, personally. Um, not that you can't do it, sometimes it's easy, but if you're slogging through Leviticus or Numbers, four chapters can be a lot. Um, but anyway, the idea is you read through the entire Bible in a year, by reading each one of those bookmarks once a day. I, you know, there's so many methods out there for reading. Even even our treasury of daily prayer that I use here is a method for reading through the Bible, although it's not the whole Bible. Um, and, you know, and I think it's great and wonderful if you can do that. But it's, oh, I brought me my whistle. Yeah, that'll be a wish. Thank you. Um, uh, but, uh, the big thing is to be in the Word, right? It doesn't matter how you read it. I told somebody once, just start at Genesis 1. Read until you're <clears throat> until you're comfortable. Stop. Put a bookmark in. Mark the page. Uh, and then um, when you're ready to read again, whether it's later that day or uh, later that night or the next day or two days later, pick it up and begin reading where you left off. Not difficult. And that, that's less burdensome and uncomfortable because we always have to set these goals. I'm going to read the Bible in a year. I'm going to read all the Bible in two years. I'm going to read all the Bible in three years. I'm going to read all the Old Testament in a year, all the New Testament in a year. But just read it. It doesn't matter. God didn't say, thou shall set a goal and then thou shall complete it. No, he said, be in my word. And that's what you're doing here too, friends. You're in the word. Quit rambling, pastor. It's like it's Saturday morning and you just don't care. And you're going to run out of coffee from all your rambling. All right. <clears throat> if you have the Lutheran Service Book, page 295, Daily Prayer for Individuals and Families, that's where we start each day. I have my Treasury of Daily Prayer, which does the same thing here. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice. Oh, no, wait. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O oh Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. <laughs> A little stuffy, too. Our psalm today, <clears throat> Psalm 29. Boy, I am a little stuffy, a little dreamy. <laughs> Slept too long. <laughs> Sorry, slept too long and too long in a horizontal position, and now I'm paying for it by all the stuff that's flowed and built up. Psalm 29, verses 1 through 4. It's actually 1 through 4a. Sometimes you'll see a reading and it's got a little letter after it, like 1 4 through 4, lowercase a, and that means it's the first sentence in verse 4, and that's where you stop. Uh, sometimes you'll see 1 through 4b or c, and it's, it's, it's just... The letters indicate the sentence in the group. And this is actually 1 through 4, A, and 8 through 11. Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord glory, do his name. Worship the Lord in splendor and holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders the Lord over many waters. 
The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the deer give birth and strips the forest bare. And in all his, uh, in, in, uh, and in his temple, all cry glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forever. May the Lord give strength to his people. Uh, Ashley, you're throwing me off. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits as king forever. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. Ashley, I would read your comment to everybody, except that I don't see your comment here. Um, Ashley made a comment and, and asked that I read it to all of you. Um, but it, it's, oh, here it is. Where did it come from? Oh, it's okay. It's after, after Kathy. She says, please keep Renee, who Brian takes care of in Marshfield. Okay, well, we'll yes, we'll put Renee on our prayer list. And uh, oh, there's Linda replying to my comment. Bob and Jeannie are, are going to visit Mike today. Okay. Uh, and Mike's wondering when he's going to see Linda. Okay. All right. Yes, we will add Renee to our prayer list today, Ashley. I don't know where I was anymore. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forever. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I'm a squirrel. You can't interrupt me in the middle of things, and, and that's why I turn my. That's why I don't. That's why a pastor doesn't take the phone into the pulpit, or and I and I turn off the connection to my watch on Sunday morning because otherwise, it's not going to be good. Uh -huh. I have to think. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings. There's a word we don't use anymore. Ascribe, right? It's a declar It's a declarative word. Declare to the Lord, O heavenly beings. Declare to the Lord glory and strength. <laughs> Describe. Des declare to the Lord the glory that is due His name. Bow down before the Lord. Worship the Lord. Bow down before the Lord and splendor and holiness. <clears throat> the voice of the Lord is over the waters in the creation. Um, in, Saint, in, 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 in the creation, that's kind of the image we get, is the Lord is over the waters, and, and he speaks and creates. Um, but here then, that same voice that creates shakes the wilderness. Um, it, it's a it's a voice that is so gentle that that the deer can give birth, and a voice so strong that it'll that it'll strip the forest bare. And all in the temple be call out glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord is sits enthroned as king forever. Well, the Lord is in charge, right? I mean, that's kind of what we're getting here. The Lord is in control of all things, even even the things that seems like He uh, are beyond us. He's in control of, and He gives His people strength, blessing His people with peace. All right, let's go on to our <clears throat> reading from Ezekiel here. <clears throat> oh, Romans, Romans six is the reading today. Um, some of you probably heard. Romans 6 last Sunday. Uh, others will hear it this Sunday. It's it's the epistle reading um, for series A uh, to be used with the baptism of Christ. Um, do not know all of you do not do not all of you who have been baptized in Christ know that you have been uh, have died to sin. And I'm paraphrasing in a bad way. <clears throat> the juices aren't flowing yet. Well, they are, but here and through my nose, not in my brain. 
Ezekiel 37, 15 through 28. So we're not picking up where we left off yesterday. We've jumped ahead a little bit. <clears throat> we jumped from chapter 36, halfway through chapter 37. Ezekiel 37, picking up at verse 15. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, take a stick and write on it. For Judah and the people of Israel associated with him. Then take another stick and write on it for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and all the house of Israel associated with him, and join them one to another into one stick, that they may become one in your hand. And when your people say to you, will you not tell us what you mean by these? Say to them, thus says the Lord God, behold, I am about to take the stick of Joseph that is in the hand of Ephraim and the tribes of Israel associated with him, and I will join with it the stick of Judah and make them one stick, that they may be one in my hand. When the sticks on which you write are in your hand before their eyes, then say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will take the people of Israel from the nations among which they have gone and will gather them from all around and bring them to their own land. And I will make them one nation in the land and the mountains of Israel and one king shall be over them, over them all. And they shall be no longer two nations and no longer divided into two kingdoms. They shall not defile themselves anymore with their idols and their detestable things or with any of their transgressions. But I will save them from all, save them from all backslidings in which they have sinned and will cleanse them and they shall be my people and I will be their God. My servant David shall be king over them and they shall have, they shall all have one shepherd they shall walk in my rules and be careful to obey my statutes. They shall dwell in the land that I gave to them, or gave to my servant Jacob, where your fathers lived. They and their children and their children's children shall dwell there forever, and David my servant shall be their prince forever. I will make a covenant of peace with them. It shall be an everlasting covenant with them, and I will set them in their land and multiply them, and will set my sanctuary in their midst forevermore. My dwelling place shall be with them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. The nations will know that I am the Lord who sanctifies Israel when my sanctuary is in the midst, in their midst, forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> oh, Lord, what are you saying? Take a stick. Write on it, Judah. Take another and write on it, Joseph. What's the difference between the people of Judah and the people of Ephraim? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Well, <clears throat> are they a people opposed to one another? Are they a, 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 a people despising each other? Um, are the people of Judah representing the uh, faithful Israelites? And Ephraim is the people who are against the Israelites or perhaps... The Gentiles, perhaps I need more wisdom and more knowledge here before I wander into these places. Let me just, I'm just pulling this up here. Um, Ezekiel 37, verse 15. 
pulling this up here in my study Bible. It's the restoration of the kingdom through new hope and faith. Um, oh, and the study Bible, the study Bible lumps 15 to 28 and doesn't talk about a, a single verse in there. Just throws it together and says, God will restore the kingdom. Uh, okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Um, Well, all right, then uh, I'm on the right path here in, in my head. I'm in my right path. Um, I believe Judah is the kingdom of Judea, the southern kingdom. And Ephraim represents the northern kingdom, which were divided, right? David, <clears throat> David had brought them together, uh, and Solomon, during Solomon's reign, they remained together, but Solomon's son divided them again. Um, by his actions, forced labor upon the Ephraimites that, or the, the people of the northern kingdom who were helping build temples and so on. <clears throat> he said, if, if, my, if, my, if my father's whip stung you, wait to see what my, my scorpion does to you, um, which is a, a seven or nine um, uh, winged or, or fingered um, whip. Um, so he says, take, take, take one, right, Judah, take the other, right, Ephraim, and make them one stick. Um, he will reunite the kingdoms. But the reuniting of the kingdoms goes beyond just the reuniting, reuniting of the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. Um, it is the kingdom, the restoration of the kingdom, of his kingdom, uh, not on earth. And not, not through the, the bonds of, 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 uh, what do I want to say? Negotiated contracts and agreements, uh, not not out of national fealty, but out of faith, um, out of hope and faith. Um, and the, the binding agent, um, the binding agent, and the ruling agent of the two kingdoms combined will be the Son of David, God's only Son, uh, Christ. Um, all nations <clears throat> will have allegiance to that, um, and we should. I mean, we, our nation. Some, some try to say that that the United States, our nation, was was never a Christian nation, but it was. Um, it wasn't necessarily what I would call a confessional Christian nation, right? Um, it it wasn't because we had. Our, our our founding fathers, for the most part, were deists. They believed in God, but they were, they kind of had the the watchmaker image of God that the that God created all things, set it set it in motion, like like a watchmaker makes a watch and winds it up, and then and then left, and 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 will come back one day to wind it up again. Um, um, that's that's kind of that's very very coarse view of deism, um, but there were. There were faithful Christians too. I mean, that the, there were Christians that were confessional, but our leadership was kind of, kind of that, not loosey goosey, but they didn't have a full understanding of the scriptures. But, but they did create, they did create a nation um, built upon Ju the the what's called the Judeo Christian ethic, um, uh, I, 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 and and uh, I don't know why I went there. Um, I had a purpose with that. Um, but there are Christians in every nation. Um, even the nations who who have rejected Christianity and, and who treat Christianity as a, as a crime, um, there's still Christians there. So all nations. Um, and, and when we see, when we hear in Scripture, when we hear all nations, we're not necessarily talking about the governmental bodies either. We're talking about the the people who live in all lands. So all nations, the entire world over, uh, will are, are ruled by Christ. And the, and the fact is, uh, if we listen to what the psalmist said, everything, we don't have to listen to what the psalmist said. The fact is, 
everything is ruled by our Heavenly Father uh, and His Son, to whom He gave all authority in heaven and earth. Um, God has created everything. He has, has uh, and, and He continues to care for it. And, and now He has redeemed it, redeemed the creation, um, atoned for it, reconciled it um, through his, through the blood of his son Jesus Christ, who is our who is our good shepherd. Um, so, take the the Judaites and the uh, and the Ephraimites and and the and the Gentile, the ethne, and put them together. And then when they ask what it is you are holding, tell them that this is. Uh, what will be, and there will be one king over them, who is uh, David, the son of David. Um, and, and now their defiling will be no more, and their idols will be no more, and their transgressions will be forgiven. Right? That, and the king, what a, what a joyous place for a king to rule if all sin is removed. Right? I mean, the, usually what happens is the king is a sinful uh, egotist who who asserts himself over the people um, so that he can be prosperous. But what if the king, instead of being some sinful egotist, is 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 in fact the god of all things, um, and and instead of having to force his people to worship him, to bow down before him, and to bring them tribute. They bring it out of love, out of, out of love for who he is, and they bow down before him. Um, that's, that's the in, image of the final kingdom, of, of God's kingdom, of, of the new kingdom, the new, the new heavens and the new earth after the resurrection. They and their children and their children's children shall dwell there forever, forever without end and David my servant shall be their prince forever and in the scripture the word prince and king are interchangeable the prince isn't the son of the king the prince is a king a ruler the top ruler and I will make a covenant of peace with them not a covenant of war not a covenant of law not a covenant of, of demanding but a covenant of peace and that peace isn't worldly peace it's not the it's not the peace that that nations seek between each other or people seek between each other but this is the peace that surpasses all understanding this is the peace that says that 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 my concern for my own life is even overshadowed by my concern for your life and i will set them in their land and multiply them and they'll and i will set my sanctuary in their midst forever my dwelling place shall be with them, and I will be their God, and they shall keep, and they shall be my people. And then nations will know that I am the Lord who sanctifies Israel, when my sanctuary is in their midst forevermore. And that's important right there, right? By the blood of Christ Jesus, we are justified. That is to say, we have been made righteous uh, with God through the blood of Christ. Um, and now, thinking baptismally here, it is the indwelling of God's Holy Spirit in us and the call of the gospel that it guides us to, that sanctifies us. What is Our justification sets us right with God so that we will be with him forevermore, uh, that, that our sins are forgiven, uh, and that we dwell, we live in Christ Jesus. Sanctification is now how we live. Um, our lives in that justification. Sanctification does not save us. We aren't saved by how good we can be. Um, we are saved by the justification that comes through the blood of Christ Jesus and our faith in him. Uh, sanctification now is knowing what God has done for us, uh, knowing that uh, he has had great compassion upon us, that he has shed his blood for us, we seek to do that for others um, and for for those in need. All the things that 
that are are um, brought up in the <clears throat> in in when 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 Jesus speaks of what the end times will be when the when the sorting of the sheep and the goats um, you you did all these things you did um, clothe the naked feed the hungry uh, visit the sick and the prison prisoners all these things you did without ever knowing it um, but as you did to the least of my people you did to me that's sanctification right as opposed to the other side of the coin um even those who call lord lord who who have no faith but uh, are are by the will of their hearts trying to be sanctified uh, but yet are not justified uh and and uh they say well when 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 were you hungry when were you naked? When when were you lonely that I need visit you? When were you in prison? Because they don't even know. Those who do it don't even realize they've done it. Those who don't do it don't even know they haven't done it. It's kind of an amazing thing when you think about it. That's why sanctification doesn't save us, but it certainly is a witness to our justification and the salvation that God has given us through the blood of Christ. And so it's through that blood of Christ, that's the bonding agent, right? Um, in our baptism, we all become part of the, the, the family of God, the church. And in that church, we are bound together, brothers and sisters, not by, not by flesh or will, but the spirit of God, the blood of Christ. Brothers and sisters of Christ, you are my brothers and sisters of Christ. I am your brother in Christ. Through Christ, who's bound us together in the promises of God. That's good stuff. Oh, man. Let's go to our prayer of the day. I didn't know where I was going to wind up with that, but it was pretty good. I should write a book. All right. Prayer of the day. Let us pray. Oh, Lord. Mercifully hear our prayers, and having set us free from the bonds of our sins, deliver us from every evil. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let's, uh, let's do this. Oh, let's, uh, let's not do this yet. Let's do uh, the Apostles' Creed. Let's get rid of the reading. I believe in God, the Father, almighty maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, he descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father, almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian, wait, yeah. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Talk about the left hand and the right hand not knowing what it was doing. I'm over here doing the creed, and my right hand's over here checking things on Facebook. I have one set of eyes, and they don't split. We continue with the prayer which our Lord taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And for ourselves and others on this Saturday morning, victorious Lord, risen Christ, the temptations and allures of the devil, the world, and my own sinful desires are many. Without you, they are too much. Abide with me. Help me fight against the evils surrounding me this day. Do not let me be overcome by them. Let me stand firmly under the banner of your cross, confidently knowing and firmly believing that I have victory in you over sin and every evil. Seek and save all who have been overcome by the temptations, allures, and assaults of these 
powerful enemies. Restore those who are lost and have fallen away from the faith. Strengthen everyone whose faith is wavering. Hold them in your hands and fold them with your love. Remind them that you have not abandoned them. Help them to see that despite what they are going through, in fact, for that very reason, you died on the cross and rose from the dead, giving them the victory. As my day begins, cause me to remember that you are with me and I have nothing to fear. Allow my work to be productive and beneficial. Keep my lips and my life free from evil and my eyes firmly fixed upon your cross. Let me depend on you. You are my strength. You are my help. You are my life. You are my salvation. And by your good and gracious will, I trust that you will lead and guide me this day and all days. This I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, be with those who suffer in body, mind, or soul. Especially on this day, we pray for Pat, Lois, Anne, Brianne, Rose, Bob, Mike, Megan, Dan, Ezra, Neely, Jeremy, Ashley, Renee, and all who call upon your most holy name. Give them strength where strength is needed, comfort where death draws near, and always the assurance of your blood shed upon the cross for them, that even in the, in the midst of this life where we are dying, you have given them victory. This through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end. That our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Hey, do me a favor, guys. If you want to add people to the prayer list, that's fine. Um, but but message me before we start this or after we start this or even on the page for our group because this is tagged as a um, religious social group. There is a prayer button. Ask for prayers. There is a prayer button. And if you click that button and type in what you'd like for a prayer there, um, I'll see that during the day and, and I can add it to the next uh, time we have devotions. Um, but I am a squirrel, and if you distract me while we're here, okay, I want, I want, I, I, I want it. I want you to, to be willing to speak with me and, and ask me for prayers. I mean, I am a pastor. I am, I'm not necessarily all of your pastor, although some of you listening are um, members of my congregations, or I have been your pastor in the past. Um, but um, I, that's not an unwillingness to pray. It's just a don't throw me in a, you know, into a downward spiral. <laughs> it's like standing up in the middle of the congregation on Sunday morning and saying, hey, pastor. Well, okay, we can probably deal with it once or twice, but let's not do it too much. Um, so uh, God's peace be with you. Uh, you'll see a recording on Monday, as I have already said. Um, tomorrow, though, tomorrow's, tomorrow's church. Go to church. It's Sunday. Go to the, to your to your house of worship and and uh, and and receive the gifts of Him who died and rose again for you uh, in the in the forgiveness of sins, the preaching of the word, and the very body and blood with which He feeds your faith, uh, increasing your sanctification and growing you to do the good works which He has commanded you from the beginning of the world. That's good stuff right there, too. God's peace. We'll see you back here. Well, you'll see me Monday.